Welcome. Um, we have to uh, revisit the formulation of the mathematical model for um, virus dynamics, the, the simple or basic model for um, virus dynamics. Uh, this is a model in which you can think of the equations uh, as a model for interacting species. Uh, in principle, there is uh, a, vir a population of virus inside, th these are equations again that make sense, uh, inside a typical host, um, and uh, there is a population inside this, inside this host uh, of virus that is interacting with cells. Uh, the cells are typically referred as target cells, they, each of them will be the host cell for a virion, a particle of virus, to invade that cell and use, hack the nucleus of the cell uh, for its own purposes of reproduction. So think of the virion as intending to uh, reproduce itself and somehow the cloning or photocopying, making photocopies of itself is something the virus on its own is incapable of doing, so um, they use the um, cell for that purpose. And the context that we are um, motivating has to do with a specific um, viral infection. Uh, we are going to write some equations that became um, known in the context of better understanding uh, the pandemic of HIV. So the virus in question is the HIV uh, virus. And uh, we had seen similar equations, but now we're going to introduce um, some uh, new notation uh, and some additional terms that we hadn't uh, utilized before. Uh, but let's keep in mind that this is an interacting species uh, scenario. Uh, so we have virus interacting with target cells, specifically for HIV, uh, the HIV targets cells in the immune system um, that are called CD4 cells, they're a special type of um, T cells. And then <coughs> among the populations, the population of target cells, there are going to be two groups. One group of cells that are considered uninfected, so they are healthy, uh, you could associate them with the compartment of susceptibles in the epidemic models. And then there is uh, the other group of cells that are infected. They are invaded by virus. And um, so we have uh, two species, basically, uh, CD4 cells that are interacting with virus. Okay? Um, so let's uh, review, let's revisit the equations. So uh, we're going to use the letter T to denote um, the size of the healthy um, target cells, okay? And the healthy or also called uninfected target cells. And this is the first equation of the model. The uh, terms here that uh, look quite familiar are the first two terms, right? So we have that... Um, uh, S minus uh, S is a constant, and D is another constant. You can think of D as the um, death rate. Um, and uh, the term that also appears familiar here is an interaction term. So uh, the state variables are T for target cells and uh, target uninfected cells. And then we're going to have a state variable i that denotes infected cells. And then we'll have the state variable v that denotes uh, virions or particles of virus. Each of these uh, quantities is a function of time. Um, and so this term beta v over t is a mass action type of term, is a, a substantial nonlinearity there. Uh, you can think of this as the interaction, the interaction between uh, virus and uninfected cells. Okay, and so that is, uh, those interactions are, appear here with a negative sign, so they are detrimental to um, the population of uninfected cells. And uh, let's see, uh, the, well, maybe I forgot to mention that, um, 
another new term here is um, this uh, additional term that involves a form, involves a parameter r, uh, there is some uh, intrinsic growth rate, and then involves a carrying capacity for the population of um, uninfected cells. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss more on that in just a second. So the next equation um, is something that looks very familiar as it did before. Those interactions between virus and uninfected cells are detrimental for uninfected cells, but however, they appear here as a growth uh, term for the population of infected cells. Are precisely those interactions what are acting as a source term uh, for the uh, number of infected cells and then uh, you can see here that this term a is also a constant rate of um, dying off so basically these terms d times t and a times i are linear terms uh, and they denote um, th the assumption here being that um, an uh, uninfected cells are dying at a constant rate uh, and infected cells also die at a constant rate and we simply assume those constants are not necessarily the same constants. And the last uh, equation is uh, something that also looks very familiar as we uh, had studied before. Uh, we have a source term. Uh, source is the gain on the equation for the virus. The source term is proportional to the size of infected cells. So the more infected cells, then the more particles of virus that are produced. And then um, consistent with what we had mentioned here with this constant A and the constant D in the first uh, compartment, uh, here is also assumed that the virus uh, dies at a constant rate. Uh, typically, we call that a rate of clearance. So let's uh, talk more on that uh, logistic term on the equation for infected cells. Uh, before, um, we had um, mentioned in, in this class um, an, an equation for population dynamics that uh, looks like this. So we would write something like dx dt would be equal to something that looks like rx times 1 minus, minus x over k. So with this equation, uh, we have one parameter called R, and K is called the carrying capacity. So uh, you could think that of what occurs what's happening here is as if you think of the total um, number of uh, target cells. So what if we think of X being something like T, the uninfected uh, cell population, plus I, the population of cells that are infected? So if we had that, for example, um, you know, when we write an expression like this, um, using that expression here, so this would translate, if you will, into having something that looks like R times T plus I times 1 minus something divided by K, and then... Uh, we say that that something is T plus I. Okay, so we could then say, well, uh, this is, um, you, know, you can use distributivity here and you can say, okay, so you have R T times this term plus R I times that term, okay, and where this term is 1 minus something divided by carrying capacity, 1 minus the fraction that divides by the carrying capacity, and this fraction is T plus I, both sides, T plus I. So with this, we could argue that uh, the, the rate of change of the entire um, population of target cells, uh, that would be dx dt, uh, if we think of the total population of target cells as the state variable uh, and we write an expression like that, we can see how um, the, the rate of change of that total population 
gets a contribution uh, from the subpopulation of uninfected cells and a contribution for the subpopulation of infected cells. So combining what uh, we wrote in the previous page with um, uh, what we're saying is that, well, then the on one side we would have that the rate of change of the total target set population, that would be the rate of change of T plus I, okay, um, that we derived in the previous um, page of calculations that that is something that looks like R times T times that term plus R times I times that term. So here on the left hand side uh, we know that there's some linearity so you could sort of think of the derivative. The derivative is a linear operator so you can break this sum you end up with something that looks like the rate of change of the uh, uninfected cell population plus the rate of change of the infected cell population and that being R times T plus R times I. Right, and here we have 1 minus T plus I. So uh, once we write these equations then uh, we could say, you know, we could think of sort of the dynamics uh, here for the uh, and healthy, um, I mean the uninfected cell population being uh, receiving a contribution uh, from this term, okay, and on the other hand, the rate of change of the um, population of infected cells then receives a contribution from this other term. So in the literature, you find sometimes expressions that involve um, the uh, involve a term that looks like a logistic um, growth model, um, and and it's a it's a combined logistic thing. So the thing to keep in mind here is that um, there are two parameters, right? So one of them is called uh, the intrinsic uh, growth rate and is the term that appears um, as a factor to this to this whole expression and then the other term the other parameter here is called the carrying capacity okay um, so there are instances in which it makes sense for uh, the mathematical model to include um, the carrying capacity you may think of that as some kind of uh, maximum or cap under which the population can sustain um, the growth of individuals, right? This is some type of maximum capacity, capacity given the available resources for a population and uh, sometimes these uh, models uh, would incorporate uh, these type of terms if that information is available. So we are going to pause now and we will continue uh, with the discussion on this reformulated basic model for virus dynamics.